In this video I'm going to show you guys how to create a method in our world builder to randomly instantiate units in the game. So we'll be able to instantiate as many units as we like and also give it an added height so we can instantiate on the ground of the terrain by default but we can also pass in an added height value so we can instantiate units in the air if we want to create a cloud system. So a very powerful method that will instantiate as many game objects as we like and the method we're going to use is called public void instantiate random position we're going to pass through a string we're going to pass through the resource so resource we're going to load from our resources folder we need an integer the amount of times we want to instantiate this and also um, the float added height added height so that's what we're going to use. In the future we'll just be able to pass through a resource we want to instantiate at the random position and that is going to be the first method of our world builder. But in order for this to work we need to know a ton of data from our terrain so we can pass in the terrain here, public terrain, world terrain. This is our platform for our game. Well, you might want to modify this script if you have multiple levels of your game, maybe we can do that later. Um, but the second thing, public layer mask terrain layer we will only want to interact with the terrain in order of working out this random position and we also need a bunch of other data which I'm going to define really quick public static floats okay so terrain left terrain right terrain top terrain bottom terrain width terrain length and terrain height I don't think I've got that one in there. No, cool. So you might be wondering, we worked out this, these values, or some of them, in our world camera script because we needed to work out the boundaries and stuff. Well, for, you can feel free to use those if you like, but I like to keep my script separate because if I work on another project, I can copy and paste or just drag the script into the project without worrying about compatibility. And um, these these uh, these variable names are quite easy to use as well okay guys so before I continue let's just jump back to our scene and uh, configure this our layer mask is simply the ground layer and our world terrain is our terrain in the game terrain main okay so I'm just going to take a couple of secs to um, define these values simply the world terrain transform position X terrain bottom is the world terrain transform position Z so we've just got these two the position of the terrain at the X and the Z at this point that's what terrain left and terrain bottom is terrain width is simply world terrain terrain data size X terrain length is world terrain again terrain data size z so the length is this point going up towards this point that's the length okay terrain height we won't use this in the video but it might be worth storing for future terrain data size z y okay going upwards next terrain right is terrain left plus terrain width and very similarly terrain top is terrain bottom plus terrain length I'm glad we got out that out of the way I'm not going to repeat that in the video so um, we can delete these two lines of code now because we don't need them and uh, let's continue on to creating this method instantiating at random positions so firstly we need to actually define the variables we need and then we can loop through the amount of times we want to instantiate then generate random position okay so we're using a loop so I'm going to create a variable called i equals zero just a counter to let us know at what point at where we are in the loop um, float terrain height define this as zero for now um, we're going to define a ray cast hit and call it hit because in order to work out the terrain height at a particular point we need to generate a ray cast point it directly down and where that ray cast hits the terrain that is the height of the terrain at that particular point so we'll deal with that in a sec okay so float 
random position x, random position y, random position z. These are the three main values we need to work out in order to generate our random position. Simple as that. And the last thing is the vector 3 um, random position. So the final vector 3. So let's just say vector 3, 0 for now. Vector 3, 0. And with these values out of the way, we can go and define our do while loop. So we're going to do something while i is less than the amount of times we want to instantiate. Okay, so i plus plus, so we don't have to loop inf infinitely. We can instantly work out the random position x because we can pass in a random range between the terrain left and the terrain right. That's very simple. And similarly, we can do it as well for the position z random range terrain bottom terrain top so we've worked out two of these values already position y is a bit more complicated we're going to use the raycast for this so if physics raycast um, so our raycast is going to be a new vector 3 it's going to be cast from our random positions x and the y value, so we need the we need the raycast to be cast above the terrain. It always needs to be above the terrain because the raycast is going to travel downwards, and the point where it hits the terrain is our height, basically. So we want it to be above the terrain. For this reason, I'm going to pass in 9999 just to make sure it is above the terrain, and we know the z value, random position z. From here, we can say, yep, the raycast is going to go down, vector three down. We're going to store the hit information in our raycast hit object, and the raycast is going to continue infinitely. Okay, and we we only want this raycast to interact with the terrain layer. Okay, so that's everything, and we, all we need to store in this raycast is terrain height. Is the hit point y? Simple as that. So the only thing we want from this raycast is the is the hit point. From here we can say the random position y is simply our terrain height plus our added height we passed through our method. So now we have the full random position. We can say random position is a new vector 3, random position x, random position y, random position z. So from this we can then instantiate the unit. So instantiate last thing to do in the method. Um, we want to do resources load and then pass through the resource from our method. Um, type of, we need to pass through a game object otherwise it won't work, our method. Um, give it the position, so random position and the quaternion identity is going to be the world rotation for this object. So that's it, that's our method done. And I'm just going to see if we have any errors. No, we don't, that's good. So now we need to call the method. I'm just going to get rid of these comments. We're going to call the method in the awake. So I want to instantiate, for example, my robot. So it's in my prefabs folder, robot, in my resources folder. Um, the next thing is the amount of times I want to instantiate it, 20 times let's say, and added height, let's put zero because I want it to sit on the terrain. And that's it for now. So let's hop back and uh, everything's done here. Let's play the game and see if it works. Boom, here we go guys. So there's got 20 robots floating around in random positions in our map, which is awesome. But the thing is, I'm going to show you, the robot is floating above the <coughs> ground a few units and I'm going to show you why this is. So if I right click he floats down very slowly and then starts moving so we can do this for any, any amount of robots. So the reason it's floating is because so instead of using my robot I might have edited that already I'm going to drag on my prefab so there it is in my resources folder. So as you can see in the character controller the center of the game object has been manipulated it's 16.27 so this this is the reason why the robot is floating in the air so if i put zero the the um the controller collider goes down but that's okay we can just grab the the, the full robot bring it up to a point where we want the the uh, collider to be so 
maybe here just above the ground as a reference and then simply get our three objects and drag them down as well to the ground okay I think that's pretty good let's double check yeah so it's everything's matching up nicely again I'm gonna drag my robot and replace the prefab done let's try again see if it works okay a bit too much um, overcooked it a bit because our sensor is actually here so again just a trial and everything let's just bring it up a tad and again let's just bring it up that looks pretty good let's just drag it might be a good thing to um, tweak these values before you start with something else in your game but never mind let's try one more time okay that's better that's more like it so the robot's floating above <coughs> the ground now and as you can see there's 20 in the game so that's pretty cool okay let's just try one more thing I'm gonna hop over to the script let's create 200 see how fast unity loads with these robots play the game so I'm waiting for the game to load uh, my laptop's pretty slow anyway 2008 MacBook Pro I'm using for now but as you can see 200 robots instantiated and they're still going into the ground a little bit that's cool so just tweaking out your robot really so let's bring it up a little bit boom replace the prefab and now we're done boom so okay 200 robots in the scene now so really powerful little scripts there guys you can create I don't know some cloud systems if you want game objects to float if you want to create foliage in your games or simply loads of units at random positions go ahead and do this method so we can just take this whole robot and bring it down sorted so that's it for this video um, feel free to copy and paste this method guys and uh, this script if you like I think I'll supply it on unity chat channel for free so check it out in the description thanks for watching guys see you in the next video